E A G L E S. Say fly eagles fly. Fly eagles fly. Fly eagles fly. <laughs>your boy fully fresh aka the general here reporting for duty yes yes a four for the better bird podcast yes y'all are fourth too if you haven't done it make sure you hit that sub button right down there man i appreciate it you already know listen listen i'm gonna go out on a limb if things change if play calling changes if situational football changes if carson wentz tightens up some things we are going six and two the last eight games we're going six and two at the worst at the worst five and three we got a chance y'all when you look at it what's our toughest game really the green bay packers who we beat last year right i am not scared of anybody on this list on this schedule should i say we got the giants we got the cowboys again we got the Washington football team again. We got the Cardinals. We got New Orleans. And we got Green Bay. You know what I mean? When you look at it, I feel as though the toughest part... And Seattle. Seattle. When you look at it, I feel as though the toughest part of our schedule, we already went through. The Baltimore's. The 49ers. Even though they're, they're, they're boo garbage right now. But they, they defense was clicking. In the beginning of the season. Now, this is another. This is why I don't like these kind of stats that people put uh, about Carson Wentz. He hasn't beat a 500 team. So when are you saying that they're 500? When he plays them or when they end the season? Because they was over 500, but they're not now. They're under 500. You know what I mean? So I don't like them kind of stats, them over 500 team. I don't like that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Wins and win, wins. Wins. And you know what's crazy? Now that we talk about wins, I think this is the first time, and I've been an Eagles fan all my life. I've been an Eagles fan all my life. I'm 37 years old. Yes, 37. I know a lot of y'all don't know that. I've been an Eagles fan all my life. I don't think I ever seen at any point in time to where as though we are on a two-game win streak. We are leading the division, yes. We're still not over 500, but leading the division, a two-way, a two-game win streak going into a bye, and people is just so negative. People is talking about Carson Wentz like he just don't know how to play at all. Like he just going to forget 2017, how we played. You know what I mean? I think he can... Things need to happen. We already talked about the play calling. I think Carson Wentz can turn this thing around, man, but he needs help, of course. You know what I mean? You want to talk about, and then can, can, I, can I talk about uh, 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 Brian Westbrook real fast? Brian Westbrook, I like you. You're, 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 a part of, you're a top five eagle of mine. Like you a lot. Don't like your comments. Don't like what you said. And I'm going to tell you what he said, and we're going to get into some things real fast. He basically compared Carson Wentz to a dog. You know what I mean? He said his friend had a dog and the dog wouldn't stop chasing the cats. And how do you stop chasing the cats? And then he said, that's Carson Wentz. Here's my thing. Me as a black man, Brian Westbrook, you as a black man, if somebody compared you to a dog, you will feel some type of way. No matter what the situation is, you got to understand like we are living in times that the media can, can spin things around. I don't like that. I get what he was saying, but I don't like the way he said it. I don't like the analogy. And then he basically said Carson Wentz is this person, and he's not. He's not going to. He's not going to change. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about your quarterback. Your quarterback was not good. Your quarterback was not good in the beginning of of his career. But you want to know what happened? He got carried by the defense. Shout out to LB. If y'all didn't see LB's live, he break down. He break down all the um. Uh, first five years of, of stats and all that. Y'all know me. I'm not a stat guy. I might throw him here, here, and there. I'm going to tell y'all this. That defense was damn near all world. Top five every single year. 
Might maybe not the first two years. But them, but, but but year five, but year three, year four, year five, yeah. They was all world defenses. Like, man, so when you look at it, man, can if, if Carson Wentz had that kind of defense, then 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 we talking. You know what I mean? That then you can be like, you know what? Carson, this defense keep putting it on, you on a back. If the defense plays and shows up, Carson Wentz, Wentz wins the game. But then you get a defense credit and you give Carson none. It's it's getting to the point, man. I I I just want to sit back and watch Carson turn it around so I can just mush it in y'all face. It's like y'all want this dude to fail so you can be the first to say, "Ha ha, told you, told you so." Look what I look look what I said and look what happened. Dudes like Joe the camera. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, man. He got me not wanting to listen to that radio station, man. Shout out to Ike Reese, though. Shout out to Ike Reese, man. Let the Bronco Buck. I think it's like Let the Bronco Buck Day or something, some community day that he got going on. Shout out to him for that. Because my thing is, and I'm tired of people just saying just because I take up for Carson Wentz. I'm tired of people saying that. I don't look at his flaws. Let me tell you something. He is not going to be a guy, an accurate pocket passer that you th that you want him to be. And I'm talking to all of you haters, and I'm also talking to Doug Peterson. Because when you look at it, right, the best year that he had, the best year, should have been MVP. Won the division in 13 games. He only completed 60% of his passes. But yet, we was winning. The defense was balling. We was running the football. Complimentary football. Doug Peterson, Frank Wright, and all them dudes, they was calling the right plays. It was times that defenses came to the line, and we can't. We would come to a formation, and they would say, what the hell is going on? Time out. We don't know what's going on. Man, things how so so things have changed so much. They change. They just change so much, man. But people forget all that. People forget the fact that we was third in the league in rushing. We at the bottom of the list. We at the bottom of the list right now. We in the twenties. Even though Boston Scott is averaging six yards a carry, Miles Sanders is averaging six yards a carry, but still, we are at the bottom of the list when it comes to rushing. That's a problem with me. When we won a Super Bowl, we was number three. So it's not all Carson Wentz. That's what I need y'all to get into your head. And I know these last three videos been about Carson. It's, yeah, I know these last three videos really been about Carson and all that, but at the same time, man, when you look at it, it's bye week. Ain't really too much to talk about. Um, I'm not going to sit up here and talk about other teams. That's really not. That's really not what I do. I don't talk about dollars unless I'm. I'm talking about the fans or the concert creators and how much they, how much they stink and all that kind of stuff. But I don't make videos about Dallas Cowboys. So you know, we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Carson. We're going to talk about Doug. You know what I mean? We're going to talk about this. His defense needs to step up. Are they doing well? Have they been doing well the last couple games? Yes. And we have been winning the last couple games. You know what I mean? It's complimentary football, man. It's just not Carson out there. And yes, he has to get it through his head that he, he he's not the only factor. But when you have, when you're used to that and when you're used to injury after injury, you have to put the team on your back like he did last year. It's probably, you know, it's probably stuck in his head that that's what he got to do, but he got to realize he do got playmakers now. You know what I mean? Rhaegar has come back. Miles Sanders should be coming back, and that's why I'm that. That's why I'm gonna go back to. I think that we can go six and two, or or f five and three, because when you look at it, man, even even even, even Zach Ertz, I think he should come back better. Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard, Miles Sanders, um, Travis Fogum, Greg Ward, uh, Rhaegar. High tower, he got weapons this 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 year. This is not last year when all he had was Greg Ward that was his best receiver. That is not factual. You know what I mean? Travis Fogum and and Redgar, he just has to prove it. It's better than Greg Ward. So even though we don't have the veteran guy that's dominant and you know everybody fears, 
you still you, you still got some talent, man. And I think when we get into the playoffs, we're gonna be on we're gonna be on a hot streak and people ain't gonna wanna play us. People ain't gonna wanna play us. So what are they gonna do in the media instead of saying, you know what, people should be scared of the Eagles? What are they gonna do, y'all? They're gonna say, man, the Eagles shouldn't even be in the playoffs. They should be, they should be disgraced to have to, 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 to represent the NFC East because of this, because of that. But you can't tell me that if we go nine, six, and one. You can't tell me that if we go eight, seven, and one. With everything that with everything that has been occurring, with, with Carson Wentz in the center. And 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 two two straight games being the only starter on the field. If this was Aaron Rodgers, you know what's crazy? People are in the media screaming, "Get Aaron Rodgers help!" Are you freaking kidding me? He got Devontae Adams and also Aaron Jones. But you want the, you want Aaron Rodgers to have all this help because why? Because. Tom Brady got every freaking body. Tom Brady got any 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 older player, veteran player that that you can think of is on that Buccaneers team. The ABs of the world, the uh, the, the Four Nets, the McCoys. You know what I mean when you look at it, man. I get it, I get it. But come on, man. How is it that you can scream, get Aaron Rodgers help, but you can't say that for? For, for, for Carson Wentz. And then when we bring it up, it's a whole problem. Listen, man, like I said at the beginning of the video, I think that if, the, if Doug get his, get his stuff together, we can go 5-3 five, uh, five, or 6-2 and two in these last eight games. And I'm stamping that. I'm stamping that, yo. Like, seriously, I understand a lot of people are down. I am, I am down, but I'm also optimistic. I know what I see my quarterback do. I know the throws that nobody in the league can make. It probably one or two. And we can go, we can go bar for bar. We can go highlight for highlight. We can go throw for throw when it comes to throws that not too many people can make. You want to put it up against Russell Wilson? Okay. You want to put it up against Patrick Mahomes? Okay. You want to put it up against Aaron Rodgers? Okay. Yes, Carson Wentz got that type of repertoire. Carson Wentz got that type of arsenal when it comes to throwing a football that you like. How the heck did he do that? That Miles Sanders throw is one of the best throws I've ever seen in my life. Throwing a throw on a torn ACL with nobody gives him credit for. If that was Aaron Rodgers, then he would have got flowers and all type of stuff in a hospital bed. They disrespect my quarterback, and I'm tired of it, man. Till next time, y'all. Yo, that.